a lot of people haven't seen this yet, but there is actually an FAQ section on the official and shrouded website and there's actually some really good nuggets of knowledge in here so i wanted to go through this faq and there is something in here that's a really important game mechanic that i think is going to be crucial knowledge that people want to know when they're deciding whether or not they want to buy and shroud it if it's going to be their type of game but we'll go through all of it and we'll get to that one as well so first up what is and shrouded it is a cooperative survival crafting action rpg survive in the fallen kingdom consumed by an evil fog the shroud fight wild beasts and fearsome bosses construct grand halls and shape your homestead's terrain forge your warrior with diverse equipment and a huge open skill tree venture alone or with allies into the mist and uncover the secrets of the kingdom's downfall so yeah this is kind of the overarching just theme of the game you've got your survival crafting action rpg and you can do it co-op and then they've got this whole and shrouded mechanic where they have a mist or fog type of mechanic called the shroud and that is going to be where you can only survive for a certain amount of time until you start taking massive health losses and there's going to be mechanics within that shroud that you can kind of refresh that time and i'm sure there's different mechanics you know potions you're going to be able to drink or gear you're going to be able to wear that will allow you to be in the shroud longer and longer as you progress just kind of if i had to guess then next up they've got what is the story i'm not going to go through this a whole lot i, I don't want to do any spoilers or anything or, or kind of cover the story until you have all had a chance to play will it be multiplayer we already know that it's going to be co-op but something you definitely want to take note of is right here where they say up to 16. so your server or your world or whatever you're playing on you're going to be able to have up to 16 people on at a time in that server which is definitely an important talking point and something that a lot of people are going to be curious about. Then next up, what platforms will the game be released on? Will be released on Steam for early access first. So it's going to be your normal Windows PC Steam type release here on early access. But they do say they eventually want to bring the game to other platforms like the PS5 and the Xbox and stuff like that. Then right here, they talk about what engine it's built on and that they created their own, the holistic engine right there. Then the next one here, they talk about how can I help with development. And again, some of these you're going to want to go and head over to the official website or the official discord server and all that. If you're trying to be like a content creator or help with development or stuff like that, but I'm trying to cover kind of the things that are relevant to the game mechanics. Because as you can see here, the next couple are like, how can I support the project? Obviously, you would try to get in touch with them over on the Discord server and get ingratiated into the community. Uh, if you're a content creator, you would send to this email and give them your credentials, your socials, your links, and all that. But again, all of this can be found on enshrouded.com, their official site. What are the game's minimum specs? This would be an important thing to talk about. I did cover this in a previous video talking about the release date. If you do have a PC that is going to be struggling, maybe it's six, seven years old, or you feel like this may be a concern for you, definitely head on over there and check the specs. Now, what I did see when I looked over it myself was mostly what you would expect to see. Like you need the minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM. You're going to want 60 gigabytes of free hard drive space available to install the game you need a windows operating system of at least windows 10 some of those normal things you would expect then next we've got will enshrouded be available on geforce now they say yes how will online multiplayer server hosting work this is definitely an important one and one of the more important talking points to see within here is we have partnered with g portal to offer dedicated servers so if you've got a group of friends or a discord server or something you're trying to set up a server on on, you may want to consider checking out G portal first because that is going to be the official partnered hosting service that is actually working with enshrouded but they do also say up here on the top section that it will be possible to set up dedicated servers if you don't want to always have to be online for your friends to be able to play and they have a multiplayer and server hosting category with their knowledge base that should provide you with all the information you need Typically, this will be things like people who have a laptop or a second PC or something, and they want to set up their own server that they host there in their home on their setup if they have the capabilities to do so, and they can save the money and save the trouble of going through something like G Portal. And then this next section is not the one that I was talking about in the intro of the video, but this is actually a pretty big deal to a lot of people I bet they are curious about. So is there PVP in the game? As of yet, there is not a PVP mode in the game or any PVP planned. 
the game itself will stay as it is it is a co-op game as we think experiencing the game together is more fun compared to fighting against each other maybe but only maybe we are adding some modes in the future to just have some fun on that side of things so it's looking like the game developers really view this as a co-op game and as of right now at least they are not even considering pvp so there isn't going to be a way to like challenge your friends or or fight you know there isn't going to be some mechanic like dark souls where you can jump into other people's games and challenge them or something so as of right now it's a pve co-op game with no modes of pvp planned then this next one, I did a dedicated video here on the channel talking about the whole procedural generation versus static map. So definitely check that out here on the channel if you want a deep dive discussion about that. But what they say here is when we are creating the world, we use procedural tools to create the map, but then we use the old fashioned way by hand by free range game designer to create an immersive handcrafted experience just to make it as exciting and beautiful as it can be. And if you didn't see my other video, what this means is that the map is going to be the same for everybody. So whether you play the game with your parents or with your friends or with random people you meet in Discord, those three games will all have the exact same map and mostly the same experience as you're kind of starting out in the same spot and branching out from there. There is advantages and disadvantages to this. Some people prefer that because the map is going to be more well-crafted and more balanced and more ready for you to have a good experience out the gate. But then what they're talking about here in contrast is procedural generation. And that is going to be when a map is completely random. You have millions and millions of map seeds that are going to be different every single time you jump into a different seed. So you could have a server with your parents, with your friends, and with those random people on Discord, and they would be three very different worlds. So that is the difference between those two mechanics. But in and shrouded, they're saying it's going to be mostly a handcrafted static map experience. Then next up is, will the game support mods? They say there are no questions that mods are what makes the game truly great. But at this stage, we cannot make promises that the game will be moddable. It is something we love to implement in the future. So as of right now, early on in the first phases of Enshrouded's early access, probably not going to be a whole lot of modding going on or different ways that you can adjust the game to how you see fit. But they do say they're open to that in the future to embracing the modding community. And then this one, this is what I was talking about in the intro. When I saw this, I was like, oh geez, I gotta do a video talking about this topic because this is gonna be something that I don't like, I think most people are probably gonna like it, but I know on the other hand, some people are gonna be like, what, are you kidding me? It, it's really fun for me to defend my base. So if you see this right here, do enemies attack my base? Do I need to build defenses? They say at the moment, enemies are only interested in attacking the players not their bases or dwellings this might change after early access based upon player feedback so i you can tell they're very non-committal here and they're willing to change because this is going to be a big big decision in terms of the direction of the game if you're familiar with valheim then you're familiar with the things like troll raids and coming in to knock down your house and go crazy and ravage your farm and swing these massive logs everywhere and destroy your base it's something that the players aren't really universal in terms of agreeing on some people like that because they want the incentive to really defend their base and really worry about that and and handcraft a really good defense and it really motivates them to build a proper base but some people view it as nothing but an annoyance and they just want to play through the game and they want to just do the rpg aspects of exploring the world and not be also fighting while they're at home trying to build so you can tell they're going to kind of see how the feedback goes and see which direction the majority of players are leaning on this one. And it looks like at least they're saying that they are open to adding something like raids or attacks or things onto your base, which means if the player base does sink their teeth into the game and they feel like it's too easy or there just isn't enough going on in the world, that it would be nice if we did have to add something like raids and add some defensive structures to make our bases a little bit more interesting. It does look like they are open to pivoting in that direction. Then this next one probably isn't going to apply to a lot of people, but it's can I use my old saves from the demo or beta builds? And as we made improvements to our save system throughout development, older saves, it looks like are not going to be compatible with the current release of Enshrouded. So no, you will not be able to use any of your old saves if you were in the demo or the beta or anything. 
And then also this one here is probably a little bit irrelevant now as the game is releasing on early access tomorrow here within 12 hours or so. So uh, no, there will probably not be another beta. They're going full on into early access very soon. Um, can I use my character on another server? If so, what will transfer with me? This is another big, big topic. Is each server going to be closed or is each server going to be open where you have friends that are maybe end game and they come in with a bunch of crazy loot into a new world or is it locked? They say you can absolutely take your favorite character with you and swap between servers. They will retain their entire equipment and inventory, as well as levels and skills unlocked. In addition, they will also maintain map memory, because remember, this is a game with a static map. So as you explore it on one server, you're exploring it on all servers. Personal crafting recipes, previously collected shroud roots which you cannot farm by making new worlds previously found lore texts and tutorials and towers you found by yourself they will not maintain the majority of crafting recipes they are dependent on the npcs and crafting stations unlocked in that world available npcs for summon gotta liberate them in the new world too towers that were found by others and shared with the group so it looks like it's going to be a little bit of a hybrid of either the open or closed server system, but it looks like you are going to be able to have that immersion of just having one character that you can bounce between many different servers and play if you would like to go that route. And then this last one here is going to be a little bit of mostly like a legal disclaimer talking about tracking personal data and all of that. And again, head on over if you want to read through all of the legal jargon and all of the different stuff word for word going on in here. But I mostly wanted to cover the game mechanics for you in this one. So yeah, just in summary, kind of going through here, the big takeaways for me were multiplayer with a up to 16 player co-op some confirmation right here that they do want to branch out into consoles and some of the other platforms like PlayStation and Xbox. Then the fact that they will have the capabilities to do a dedicated server there that you can run yourself and then also have hosted for you is going to be G portal as the official partner. Then the fact that the developers as of right now seem to be very against ever having PVP in this game. It's going to be mostly focused on just PVE co-op gameplay. The fact that the map is going to be a little bit of a hybrid, but mostly a static map. And then the devs confirming that they are open to working with the modding community, but not as of right now in the first initial phases of early access. And then I thought this was a big one right here. Do enemies attack my base as of right now? The answer is no, but they are open to exploring that and maybe adding raids in the future. If they get a lot of feedback that it is definitely wanted from the player base. And the fact that they are also going to be going with a little bit of a hybrid open closed method here that we talked about as kind of the last topic that I dove into about whether you're able to bring some of your characters from other worlds and other servers into a new server with different players and bringing the same character with the same inventory and all that it looks like you will be able to do that so yeah let me know your thoughts down below and I'm excited to get to work covering this game and really go hard in the paint starting tomorrow once and shrouded is live and we can sink our teeth into the official early game release but yeah, let me know your thoughts down below and remember to subscribe if you enjoy and shrouded content because I am excited to really go hard in the paint and grind this game tomorrow and work on tons of content for the channel here to keep you in the loop on all things and shrouded. I appreciate you. I'll see you soon in the next video. Peace.